Officially, they call it a disease. But again, it's actually shape-shifting. It's a drac that's compressed the length of its fingers. The only disease you can call it is lycanthropy. But even then, it's not a disease that you can catch. It's an ability that you're born with and have full control over. Here's another one doing face pulling, and it should be clear that it is physically impossible for a human to do this. You cannot pull your jaw over your nose. What you're looking at is a drac that's compressed the middle of its face. This one's compressed his entire body, but unlike real dwarf types, his body proportions are close to those of a normal person. I have no doubt that he could get even smaller than this, but there's a limit to what they're willing to show. We know he could compress his arms and legs to almost nothing, and then he'd only be about a foot tall. The limiting factor is how much the internal organs could be compressed. As to how this compression takes place at the cellular level, I have no idea. Just that it would involve the alteration of the molecular structure. Every molecule in their bodies is being compressed, and at the same time, the weight decreases with the volume. This appears to violate the law of conservation of mass, but it doesn't, because they're not actually losing molecules. I have personal experience with individuals increasing their weight but not their size, so they can change their perceived weight at will. It's just that it's not sensible for them to walk around in their human imitation forms weighing 600 pounds. Here's another example of full body compression, maybe even slightly smaller than the one before. That's the world's shortest woman with the world's tallest model, and they're both Drax. In their native forms, they're probably about the same size. I doubt that she's an exceptionally small Drac in her native form. You're just seeing different levels of compression. If the big one is compressed about 50%, the other one is compressed at least 90%. These two have compressed their torsos and other parts, but not their heads. Once again, the official explanation is Agent Orange deformities. Here is another one with a compressed body and relatively normal head. She's described as having only one limb, her right arm. But looking at this, it's clear that she also has a left arm and both legs, though they're obviously deformed from their normal human imitation forms. Her torso is about the size of a bowling ball, but I think that the organs could be compressed even further. I was looking for an example of one without arms or legs, that had a highly compressed torso with a normal sized head, but I couldn't find that. Again, you can see shape-shifting on the secondary individual in the photos, the right photo in particular. She's compressed her right forearm and wrist, which look like they're about half the circumference of her left arm. Now we're going to look at decompression or expansion from the human imitation form. The cells and molecules are returning to their original sizes from a compressed state. Like the decompressed vein I showed earlier, it's clear looking at this that it's a very large, perhaps even gigantic creature. It's possible that they can actually expand their bodies beyond the natural size. 
that may be what we're seeing here. So if that's true, they'd be able to imitate creatures that are larger than themselves. arm compression next to decompression or expansion and they can reverse their compression states at any time. He could make his arms look like hers and vice versa. This is obviously leg decompression or expansion and the official disease is called Proteus syndrome. Her legs are noticeably longer in the left frame than they are in the middle frame. She's well over seven feet tall there. So if this is indicative of the native form, ten feet is certainly possible, maybe even taller. This story ran in the mainstream media, and they are required to show you the truth from time to time. That's what this is about, and this individual, Mandy Sellers, either volunteered or was chosen to do this early in life. They're showing you what they really are, polymorphic aliens, but they tell you it's a disease. It's up to you to use your ability to reason to determine what you're really looking at. In the left frame, she's reverting the knuckles of her right hand to show you that she's a drac. She's also reverting the curvature in her left forearm. In the right frame, she's reverting some of the veins in her forearms. Part of her left leg has supposedly been amputated at this point, but the reality is she just compressed and ungenerated that part. In Greek mythology, the god Proteus is a shapeshifter so Proteus Syndrome is actually an appropriate name. This was officially caused by a tumor, but you're an idiot if you believe that. What kind of tumor causes your leg to double in length? Cancer is actually a fungal infection of Candida albicans and tumors are cysts created by your body to enclose the colonies and prevent them from spreading. If you're that badly infected, you would have died long before this. The logical explanation is that it's shape-shifting. This is a drac that's decompressed or expanded its left leg to twice the length and three to four times the circumference of its normal human size. It looks like it belongs on an elephant. Apply this size increase to an entire body, and you can see how big they can get, and they can likely get even bigger than that. The official explanation is that it's caused by blocked lymph nodes. Right. That must be what caused the bones in her hands to double in size. She's also removed most of the texture from the skin on her arms, so it looks like it's made out of plastic. Decompression in the right arm, with the forearm and hand deformed from their normal human imitation forms. The cobra tattoo is there to let you know that he's a reptilian, of course, it's not a real tattoo. He's generating that color in his skin using his polymorphic ability, and he could remove it instantly at any time. Here's another example of decompressed or expanded hands, and he's generated a sixth finger on his right hand. In the right frame, you can also see that he's morphed his chest into a deformed shape. Head decompression, and once again, the official explanation is Proteus Syndrome. His head looks bigger in the left frame because the other man has compressed his head. 
You can tell that it's smaller than normal in comparison to the size of his hands. He's also reverting the tendon in the side of his neck. Decompression or expansion in the left deltoid and part of the upper arm with an abrupt angular transition at the midpoint. He could do this with his entire body and turn into the Hulk. The official explanation is Agent Orange. Decompression or expansion with the shape change to simulate increased muscularity. He's decompressed his upper arms and trapezius muscles, but the rest of his body hasn't changed much. The official explanation is that he's injecting synthol oil into his muscles. Note the dragon tattoo, which tells you what he really is. Again, upper arms and traps only. He's reverting his left forehead horn and the creases on his neck to show that he's a drac. Their arms are much longer than this in their native forms, so this may represent an equivalent volume on a longer, narrower arm. It's also possible that their arms are this big around. He's decompressed his muscles and generated irregular shapes. His pectoralis muscles look more like breasts, and his right trapezius muscle is formed into a square shape. In the left frame, he's compressed his right hand and wrist to show that he's shape-shifting. Again, these are not real muscles. It's plasticized tissue motivated by their polymorphic ability. Presumably, when they revert to their native forms, the muscles function naturally. Both of these individuals are exhibiting skeletal expansion in their shoulders. That's why their arms hang so far out to the sides. No matter how big your muscles get, they're not going to move your shoulder joints further out. The one on the left is reverting the lateral veins in his triceps and forearms, and the one on the right is reverting his right wrist so that it bends inward. His abdominal muscles are also far out of alignment, where the top right muscle is basically missing. It's the same thing with this guy. His skeleton has widened across the shoulders, where the arms hang further out than they normally would. His arms and abdomen have also elongated, and the circumference of his neck is clearly increased in relation to the chest. This shows that their human imitation muscles are just shapes generated from polymorphic tissue. The one on the right has reformed his abdominal muscles into large flat squares and pushed them out to the sides. These obviously aren't real muscles. The one on the left has generated the shapes of abdominal muscles over what would ordinarily be a fat belly. So the only difference between fat and muscle in their plasticized forms is the shape and firmness. It's all the same gelatin-like polymorphic tissue just molded into different shapes to imitate human muscles and fat. These two have reformed their buttocks into non-human shapes. Human muscles would never look like this, no matter how much weightlifting and steroid taking you do. The one on the left has also morphed his back out of its human imitation form. This looks similar to the back reversion I showed earlier. I think that's the hump coming out.
Here are some female imitations that have generated large muscle forms. It has nothing to do with lifting weights and taking steroids. They're just generating shapes from the tissue using their polymorphic ability. And they could generate bodies that look exactly like the male imitations. That's what this one has done. She's generated a male physique without changing her original facial code. So she doesn't have masculine facial features like other female bodybuilders. It looks like a woman's head on a man's body. And a male imitation could do the same. He could change his body to a female imitation code and then it'd look like a man's head on a woman's body. As I've shown, it's not a male or female. It's a hermaphrodite that's taken a form that looks like a male or female body with the sex organs rearranged. They're rearranging their sex organs and generating body shapes to imitate one gender or the other. They could generate a human imitation form that's half male and half female, split down the middle. They would have functional male organs and functional female organs. Some of them have done this in the past, working in freak shows, Bobby Cork being one example here. They don't do this anymore because it'd be too obvious that something unnatural is taking place. They can generate body types that are gradients between the male and female imitation forms. This doesn't happen with humans. All of these transsexuals are Drax. This one has a body that's at least 80% female and a face that's entirely female, yet he has male genitals. So it either started out as a female imitation that switched its genitals, or it was a male imitation that generated a female body and face. Whatever the case, it's definitely not a standard imitation code that they start with. This is no different from them shaping their muscles. The official explanation is implants, but that's obviously not possible. It's the same gelatin-like polymorphic tissue molded into shapes to imitate the features of a human body. His muscles are made out of the same kind of polymorphic tissue as their breasts and they can change the firmness of the tissue at any time, make it harder or softer. So they could make their breasts as hard as muscle, or even harder. And he could make his muscles soft and flaccid, or rubbery to the point where they bounce. Again, it's the same shape generation and decompression, just on different parts of the body. These two have generated overblown physiques with ridiculous proportions, their muscles and breasts. The blonde appears to have oil on her body, which she's probably generating color and reflectivity in the skin to make it look that way. The other one is reverting her pelvic plates, which have more well-defined edges than the previous examples we've seen. She's also reverting some of the veins in her arm. It looks like they have doll heads, which would make most people think it's photoshopped, but that's shape-shifting too. They've reduced the complexity of their faces, the skin texture and hair, so they look like they're made of plastic. That's why the blonde is wearing that giant crucifix earring. 
she's letting me know that all of this is shape-shifting, that it's all real. As you know, they don't have buttocks in their native forms, so they have to generate shapes on the back of the pelvis to imitate human buttocks. This one has generated perfectly spherical shapes to make this obvious. Again, shape-shifting, not implants. These three have generated egg-shaped buttocks with some angularities. The one in the middle has also generated a large growth on the inner side of her left calf. Again, these are just shapes generated from that gelatin-like polymorphic tissue. It's not real fat. The only difference between their imitation muscles and fat is the shape and firmness. By changing the shape and firmness of the tissue, they can instantly turn the appearance of a fat body into the appearance of a muscular body, and vice versa. They can also generate the shapes of muscles, but make them soft and flaccid, like fat, and vice versa. A muscular man that feels like he's made of fat, and a fat man that feels like he's made of muscle. I'll show some demonstrations of this next. 